stuff you okay, put out. Okay, folks. The inner man, the inner one, had to be built up. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you guys a little taste of this tonic that I'm making. It's a mix of five herbs: Susanna berry, goji berry, long gum fruit, sustantia mania. Just a little taste while, 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 while I'm talking. Do you, that we do have you some want any help distributing it? Um, it's going to pass it, and we'll pass it around. Yeah, we'll pass it around. Sir? Would you like some? Uh, I had it yesterday. Okay. Thank you. Man? You almost live here, don't you? You almost live here, don't you? I've been here. I'm going to pass it out on this right now, just to kind of... Uh, here, here, here. Um, Thank you. What's it for? Uh, so Almost this is like, very, it's basically <laughs> uh, liver, liver, the, the whole topic of the liver kidney, it's, uh, it's a blood building uh, formula. Thank you so much, sorry. This is <laughs> Is it going to taste good or not? <laughs> 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 it's going to taste good. You know, what's, what's good for you is not always good. It tastes too good. You know, we really love you today. And do you eat the goat cheese? Yeah, you can eat them, yeah. Oh, okay. Anybody yeah, else? Yeah. Thank you. Are you good? Yeah, I'm good. I don't know about this tea. It smells good. 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 This, this you go in and out of it, the one in the store. Really? I never take it off. Yeah. 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 It's the so detox, right? Yeah. 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 Yeah
So basically, this presentation is focused on, on your potential to thrive, and what these herbs are about is giving you the capacity to endure, endure through various challenges in life in a greater way. This is, of course, anybody know what this it's cat is? Yeah, yeah, that's a. Uh, this this cat is very adaptive. That's why I put it here. It lives in in um, in um, up, oh, above ten thousand feet in, 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 in Central Asia, in about six or seven different countries. And it you know climbs mountain, hunt, hunt, hunts in the mountains, lives in the snow. So you want to bring your, your body up to a capacity where you can adapt and be beyond danger in any environment. So what that what these herbs are about is bring your body to a point beyond danger. So a little disclaimer is that I'm not a practitioner, neither is Okwe Samoa. We're, we're educators, and uh, we come from, from, from the background of what we consider Dao, Taoist tonic herbalism, which is where you experiment and you intuit, and you, you explore, and then you, you come to your conclusions based on practice, right? So it's not, we've, we've read books, we've had mentors, but a lot of it is just intuitive experimentation. Back in the days, people would walk through the woods, to the forest, they would, a plant would talk to them, and they would see an animal eating it, they would eat it, you know, they would kind of learn about it, and these things would be documented, and, and the knowledge is passed down to us. Uh, these days, now, we, a health food store is kind of like our forest in many ways. We go into a health food store, and then we intuit that way, right? But there's still places like this around where you can collect your herbs at. So, um, these are basically the three primary tonic herbal systems. There, there's more than this out there, but these are the ones that have, I would say, have the broadest range of, of documented um, re results. And this, like I said, I got started in South American herbalism. That's a pretty fascinating uh, area, Ayurvedic. Then I got into Chinese. Chinese has uh, the broadest spectrum of things that are written down, like I mentioned earlier, which is why uh, it's so exciting to learn about th this one. And with Chinese tonic herbalism, you'll they incorporate Siberian, Tibetan, Mongolian. Uh, there's other countries incorporated in, into Chinese Chinese herbalism, even though it, the herbs are not necessarily from China, but they kind of bring it all together. So, um, in the in, in, in the world, there are, there there are there are a, you know a few hundred tonic herbs, right? A few hundred, but there's out of the, those few hundred, there's about 40 super tonic herbs. And out of those 40, about 20 of them come out of the Chinese practice. So over, over, your, over your life, you would want to definitely find out what these 40 are. Uh, we're going to be speaking about, ha about half of the, at least half of them today. And you want to get them into your diet. Not, not just in a, in a capsule form or in a tincture where you're taking a couple of grams a day. You want to make them part of your calories. Like you want to make them like you got, they're part of your like diet, you know, beyond just like a few pills. That's, that, that's what we're kind of trying to get you at soups, tonics, you know, chocolate drinks, you know, with herbs in it, all that kind of stuff, right? So, uh, Ron T. Garden uh, is my, my mentor um, in Chinese herbalism, and he wrote a book, unfortunately we're running out of it right now. Who here has Ron T. Garden's book, Ancient Wisdom of Chinese, Chinese Tonic Herbs? Does anybody here own that book? Yeah, Tom, okay. Uh, so, he talks about what the seven lessons that tonic herbs have taught him. Actually, yeah, seven. I, I added an eighth one. So, faith in nature, patience, self-respect, the value of a positive attitude, the meaning of moderation, love is everything. And then I, I added support is always available. Because once you understand these herbs, you'll understand that whatever you're going through in life, they're there to support you and get you through, through those uh, challenges and through those um, you know, celebrations a, a lot better and, and smarter. And you make less mistakes, and when you do make mistakes, you recover from those mistakes quicker. So, there's three numbers that I want to point out to. This goes back to the principles, understanding um, nature and your own body. You have the yin and yang. So, we're constantly trying to get these two aspects of ourselves in a, in a balance. So this, is, this has to do not only with food, also to do with our, our personal relations. When we choose to work, when we choose to play, when we choose to sleep, when we choose to wake up. It's, it's a constant inter interplay between those two realities. And then you have the five primary organ systems, uh, which I'm going to talk about. Uh, the liver and kidney are two of those five organ systems. Then you have the three treasures. And this pertains, this is a, there's a metaphor to it, but it's, there's also um, 
something very literal about the three treasures, and I'm going to get into that a little bit too. So, back to yin and yang. Everyone knows your brain has two hemispheres, right? You have the right and left. So the right hemisphere has qualities that are more yin, more feminine, and then the, the, the left hemisphere has more ma masculine qualities. And uh, they're an analytical, right? More kind of logical, uh, whereas the, the right brain is, it has a more intuitive, creative side. And so, with, with our, also with our diet and with our relations with other people, this balance is constantly interplaying. And so with these herbs, if ultimately trying to do, they're trying to help you synchronize the two hemispheres. So, further examples of this would be like, this is a symbol of the northern and southern hemisphere. So the black panther represents the southern hemisphere of the earth where it's warmer. That's, that's the yin, that's the, uh, the feminine side. Uh, the snow leopard represents uh, the northern hemisphere where it's from. That's the, the more uh, colder, uh, masculine side. Uh, the earth is uh, solid, the heavens are expansive. So what you're going to learn is basically uh, that contracting is basically a yang energy and expansion is a yin energy. And you're always trying to find a balance between contraction and, ex and expansion. Like right now I'm talking to you, I am uh, producing a yang energy. I am, um, I am contra contracting. You guys are listening to me, you guys are receiving, that's more of a yin energy. So this is, a, a, again, a constant interplay of breathing in, breathing out, find, finding the balance. So, you have, you have, in herbalism, you have something called the three treasures, Jing, Qi, and Shen. So it, it correlates to the body, soul, and spirit. It, it has a cor correlation to the Trinity. It correlates to this Masonic symbol of the three pillars. So the number, number three, um, rolls into a lot of things, it's an important an important number uh, in, in your own consciousness and your own health. So the analogy that we use here is the wax and the, the wax candle analogy. So you have a candle, you have the body of the candle, you have the wax, you have the fire, that's the chi of the candle, you have the light, that's the shen of the candle. So in America, people are trying to produce a lot of fire, they try to have a lot of action, they try to produce a lot of light through their personalities, where the weakness is at is in the jing, the wax, the candle, their, their bodies, structurally speaking, uh, the kidneys and liver in particular are, are not stabilizing them, themselves, so they're burning out, they're burning their primal essence out, they're burning out, uh, the, the wax is getting lower, you, they're trying to produce heat but they can't. So the main emphasis of herbalism is to build your jing. Once you build your jing, you build your, your wax, then you can produce uh, light and heat at a sufficient level. Can I ask a question? Yeah. What? Why is that? Uh, what's the significance of the of the ladder not not leaning on anything? The, well, the ladder is actually pointing um, here to the sun. You have the you have you have the sun. You have this. You have the moon and the stars. So that pertains. It's it's kind of like um, like a cult symbology that comes out of uh, the Masonic um, artistry. Uh -huh. And um, yeah, so it's basically in this case, the ladder is actually pointing. To, to the sun, and that's sort of like a, a, a state of enlightenment. You know that that w w when you synergize everything, that's what you're trying to accomplish. Is um, reaching for the sun. We can go. I, I could talk about this for like 20 minutes. The thing is pretty, pretty interesting stuff. Okay, so just wrapping up on this once again. So you have the two hemispheres. One hemisphere is, is meditative, other one is con concentration orientated, right? So you can say, as an example, America is very much uh, into concentrating, right? Accomplishing, you know, things in, in business and whatnot. Let's say India, for this example, is more meditative. So e each country is kind of maybe a little more, a little unbalanced, right? One is too much meditative, one is too in, into concentration. Well, the ideal state is to bring your two hemispheres into a state of contemplation. And then your brain hemispheres are synchronized and you can re receive and connect at a, at a deeper level. So this goes back again, bringing everything together uh, to, to bring that ultimate uh, understanding to yourselves and the world around you. Hydrogen and oxygen make water, right? So that's kind of, that's the contemplation, it would be like the water.
So tonic herbs uh, are safe to use every day. So some herbs are medicinal herbs, some herbs you only use for a short period of time for a symptom. They, they're not part of your diet, they're part of um, just healing something on a short term level. Tonic herbs are herbs, you, they're part of your food, part of your diet, use them every day in, in whatever way you can. So here's some examples of, of foods that are uh, fall into either a yin or yang spectrum. So I'm not advocating for or against any of these foods, I'm just speaking to them from an energetic standpoint, what, what they are from a yin and yang standpoint. So sugar is the ultimate yin food, and salt would be the ultimate yang food, and then and all, all other foods fall in between that spectrum, right? So these are the two extremes and everything else falls in the middle. So you go out, you have beef, chicken for dinner, and then you want some ice cream, right? Because you're you're out, of, you're too, you got too much yang in your body. So now you want dessert, you want some yin. So some people will turn to ice cream, some people will turn to alcohol, some people will turn to fruit, teas, right? But you're always you're trying to create that balance in your body. You're, you're craving that synergy. So that's this gives you an understanding also of cravings. Why 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 do you have a craving for something? So this is a constant balancing act between uh, the yin and the yang. So here are the, uh, the five primary organ systems. Each organ system has an affinity for a different flavor. This is why it's important to have every flavor in your diet every day. Because it will keep these organs more balanced. There's no, there's no such thing as giving up sweets. You, you want to have sweets that are living sweets, not processed sweets. Um, you know, sugars from fruits, from from dates, from honeys, uh, maple syrups, right? But you also want to have that sweet in balance with your sours, right? The liver has an affinity for sour. Having something sour at the end of your meal will help you digest your food. It'll still my liver, fu liver function, or something sour in the beginning of your meal. So that's uh, that's a consideration. Now, the kidneys have an affinity for salt. People say, "I'm going to get off salt. Salt's bad for you." Um, they're going to they're going to go into uh, significant uh, adrenal fatigue if they cut out all the salt. Because the kidneys are, t are tied to water, and you're actually a saltwater body. You're not a freshwater body. We're more like an ocean th than a lake, right? We're saltwater beings. So you want to have the, the good salts, the Celtic sea salts, the Himalayan salts, salts that are, have m many minerals in them, and that will keep uh, the kidney adrenal uh, system in order. And all these yin organs, they have a corollary yang organ. Right, so the gallbladder is like uh, the captain to the liver, right? Liver is a general, gallbladder is the captain. So these are bladder, intestine, stomach, these are all hollow in the middle. All these organs are solid, these are all yin organs. So again, it goes back to the earth being solid, the heavens being expansive and hollow, right? The sky above is hollow, the earth below is solid. So this goes ties back to what I was talking about earlier. This is all Chinese? From the Chinese. Right, right, yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me, uh, can you use that analogy again? You said the liver was something and the gallbladder was the captain. So these are like, these are like the generals of okay. these organ systems. These are like the captains. So they kind of like, these, these organs help carry out the, uh, the roles that, uh, of these, of these primary organ systems, yeah. So they, those, they work together. They work together, yeah. So those ones, the liver and the kidneys, they, they dictate what these, these ones are going to do, right? Yeah, they dictate, they give them the orders, and these kind yeah. of carry out the, carry out the orders. Okay. And the, the whole thing about removing gallbladders, that's a pretty bad idea, yeah. generally speaking. That's a pretty bad idea. So here's some herbal delivery systems. Now water, because you get water really hot, uh, is the primary one that you want to use. But you also want to consider uh, vinegar, putting herbs in your vinegar, putting obviously alcohol tinctures, everyone here has tried alcohol tincture. Alcohol is great because it's fast soluble, so it doesn't go through a GI tract. You don't you don't lose uh, much of, of the nutrients, so you, you can put it in your mouth, it goes right into your bloodstream through your, through your membranes in your mouth. Um, that's one of the good things about alcohol, it, has a, it delivers herbs very efficiently in the body. Not everybody can, can tolerate it, but it, it, is, it, it is a good mechanism for delivering See, alcohol is, is like a delivery vehicle uh, for nutrients. It, it, it in itself should not be used as a nutrient. It's a delivery system. Like, if a, if a pizza man comes to your house to deliver pizza, you want to eat the pizza, not the pizza man. And in, in this country, a lot of people are into eating the pizza man, you know, they're forgetting about the pizza. So that's sort of what, what that is. And chocolate is one of the best uh, 
delivery systems for herbs, especially like medicinal mushrooms, uh, great for chocolate, because uh, it's a vasodilator. It dilates the blood vessels, so whatever whatever's in your bloodstream is going to move more efficiently. With, is with it chocolate. all chocolate or just dark chocolate? Right. You want you want to use chocolate that's uh, unprocessed. You're pure 100 percent, right? And then then, right. then you could you then you can put your own honey in it. You can put your own sweetener in it. Yeah, I mean that's that's the way to do it. I mean, there's if you if you're buying chocolate in a bar, buy 80 percent or higher. You know what I mean? Like buy 80 percent or higher because it's gonna have less sugar in it and less other stuff in it. But yeah, so chocolate is definitely a, a good delivery system for these herbs. All right, so so we're talking about Jing building the, the wax in your body. This is again uh, the kidney organ system is is your Jing organ system, right? Liver is gene as well too, but kidney is the primary gene organ system. And so these are some of the super gene herbs. These, are, this, this, these fall in line into the top 20 herbs, uh, or the top 40 herbs, that was super tonic herbs uh, that I was talking about earlier. And uh, I'm going to try at least three of these. Remind me what gene means. So gene is, 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 is the analogy of the candle, okay. right? That's the wax. That's the wax, okay. right? That's the body. That's the what body. where you get the capacity. Okay. Look in terms of potential energy and kinetic energy, right? Okay. Just to use the physics terms, right? right? In order to have kinetic energy, you need potential energy. Okay. This is like your your capacitor, okay. right? The ba the battery bank of your body. So all, all these herbs will build will build jing. Some are yin yin. Jing herbs, some are yang, jing herbs, some are both yin and yang. Deer antlers at the, t at the top because it, it is both uh, a yin and a yang jing herb. It's very special. Ho Shu Wu, if someone doesn't know where to start, like it's, they gotta start with one thing uh -huh. out of the jing herbs. Ho Shu Wu is usually where I get people to start. We call them Fo Ti as well. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Just because um, it, is, it, is, it is so uh, nourishing to the kidney. And it's relatively inexpensive, and um, and it tastes pretty good. There's all kinds of good things about it. You know, there's it's just a, a very special herb. It help helps the bone marrow with stem cells. I'll get into that a little bit. All right. So this is this is the deer that uh, Dragon Herbs uses um, for the deer antler. It's a sacred deer to China, and they just cut the tips off the deer. They don't they don't kill the deer. They cut the tips when the animals are small. This is kind of in the summertime. And then keeps the deers, the deers alive longer because they don't, they don't fight as much. And uh, the nutrients in the antler tips are very powerful uh, for the for the nerve regeneration, nerve growth factor, and and for connective tissue. Anytime an animal can lose an appendage and grow grow it back, uh, those saponins in that appendage have the capacity to be very nourishing for your body. Starfish, geckos, all all these animals that can lose lose an appendage. They're, they're used in uh, the herbal, herbal systems. Right, so the Qi tonics, um, so once you do your Jing tonics, you don't want to go to Qi until you're doing Jing. Right, you, you start with the, with the Jing, then you move to Qi, but you, you could do them both at the same time. Uh, these, are, these are the super Qi tonics. Uh, cordyceps is the, uh, number one for the kidneys out of all of these. With the, with, the, with the Qi tonics, you're getting lungs, you're getting spleen, and you're, you're also going to get kidneys as well. That's kind of a typical, a chi tonic, a, a good one. So if you if you want to start with one of those, which, which would you suggest? Um, well, at this time of year, it'd probably be a, probably be a stragglers. Yeah. Because of the cold. Because of the immunity, yeah. Probably a stragglers. Um, yeah, cordyceps. You know, definitely. You know, if you if you're an athlete, you need, you need lung capacity. The Chinese. Uh, win a lot of medals. Uh, their athletes use cordyceps for lung capacity. Uh, what about singers? Um, sure. Uh, singer, actually, singer will benefit from rhodiola because the oxygen to the brain. Yeah, that's really uh, really a problem for that. So, so. Now we're getting into the shen. So shen is why you do you do herbalism in the first place. The ultimate, the reason why you you take herbs or you eat anything is ultimately to have a spirit, to have a glowing light about you. So that's really kind of the end result is to have an aura. And these are these are the herbs that build the spirit. They help you uh, get over emotional stagnation, uh, relationship uh, problems. They they help you 
not be as myopic. Everyone knows what myopic means, right? They get you looking at the big picture. They open up your heart. Uh, they also affect your immune system. Polygala, Oplacemol, we'll be talking about that herb later on. But yeah, these are all, Tibetan rhodiola is, is at a higher level than, than regular rhodiola because it's growing at a more extreme temperature in the mountains. So it has to have properties to survive extreme cold and, and the altitude. So Tibetan rhodiola is what we have in one of our products called Super Adaptogen by Dragon Herbs. If you guys have not yet tried Super Adaptogen, I would highly recommend this as you be your Shen, your Shen tonic. Uh, from which one? Which one? Uh, well, we have a product called Super Adaptogen, oh. and it has Tibetan rhodiola in it as the first ingredient. Oh, so do you work for Dragon Herbs? Well, Dragon Herbs is a product that we sell at, at the food mill. I, I work for the food mill. Oh, okay. Yeah, but we, we sell uh, a few different companies that provide Chinese tonic herbs. Dragon Herbs is the highest quality out of all the companies that we have. Okay, so we got... So, getting into stress a little bit. So, everyone here understands that stress is bad for the immune system, right? Okay, so a very simple example of that is when you... When you have too much stress, you produce uh, steroids in the body, corticosteroids. Those steroids uh, affect your B cells. These are part of your white blood cell system. And so those B cells, they're, they're killed off by excessive uh, corticosteroids in the body. That's where you get colds and, and sicknesses. When, when someone has AIDS, for example, what, what they're actually uh, losing is B cells in the body. So someone who has AIDS and someone who has a, a flu because of stress are actually experiencing similar symptoms. They're, they're in the autoimmune, autoimmune deficiency state. So that's why you want to control your stress. Stress creates pretty nasty inflammation as well. These are the herbs that, that support stress. Uh, passion flower is something that I've recently gotten heavily into. That's one of my favorite herbs for stress. It's an amazing herb. Um, a, lot, a lot of stories with passion flower. Goji berries is something you want to have in your diet uh, for this purpose. Uh, rhodiola, reishi, uh, bezia flower. So these are these are some of the, the best herbs for stress. And then, so it, it, everyone knows that the thymus gland here, how that the role of that with the immune system. No, I it's don't. part of your you're part of your uh, endocrine system. It's also part of your lymphatic system. Um, is it the, the thyroid? Bone, or the is thymus gland. It's right here. Oh. When you when we're, when we're young, it's it's big. It's kind of like almost like a pear. And then when it gets down to, to the size of the date. When you get like past 50, it shrinks. And the, the thymus gland is responsible for uh, your T cells, right? It's your your stem cells become T cells to, through the support of the thymus gland. When you have a lot of go ahead. So when this part shrinks. Yeah. Is that the cause of like even drinking water or something? You just feel it right in here. I don't know. I don't know about that symptom in particular, mm -hmm. but it's why every infection is more dangerous for someone who's over 50 because their T cells are basically exhausted, right? Because they're not creating new ones. They're running on old T cells. So uh, that's why every viral pneumonia is dangerous for a 70 year old. A 70 year old, where it's not dangerous for a 30 year old. You know, so every, every little viral infection gets a lot more dangerous. So to keep the viral low down, so your T cells are not as exhausted, right? To keep your thymus gland uh, stable, these are these are some of the immune system her herbs uh, to keep the vi viral low down in the body. So this is astragalus appears over and over again. Goji berries appears. You kind of you kind of see the pattern. Reishi appears. Gynostemma is. is Pretty powerful for that too. That's the spring dragon tea. Who here has tried the spring dragon tea from Dragon Herbs? The spring dragon tea. You, you, the yes. box. Yeah, you yeah. tried that. Yeah. Okay. So that that primary herb in this in the in the spring dragon tea is Gynostemma. Uh, a, a box of that is about ten dollars. You get twenty bags. Each bag makes three cups. I would definitely whatever's left here today get a box of that uh, spring dragon tea and get that Gynostemma into your system. And what does the gynostema do? So gynostema, it basically helps keep the viral lows down in your body. It supports your, your, your immune system. It's also good for blood sugar support, uh, blood vessels in general. It tonifies blood vessels. It's a number of things, but it definitely helps with uh, keeping the viral, the viruses down. The viruses produce inflammation. That leads to other problems. So, so these are some of the herbs for, for the immunity 
keep your uh, viruses down. Okay, so finishing up here with the bone marrow. Everyone here familiar with stem cells, adult stem cells, you guys have a general understanding. Stem cells will become tissues in the body, they will become red blood cells, they will become immune cells, they will, tra they will travel to wherever you're, you have damage, you have damage in the, in the brain, your stem cells will become new uh, neurons, they will become whatever, whatever part of you needs re rehabilitating, your stem cells will become that. Go ahead. Could a stem cell be like analogous to like a seed that can produce whatever plant is necessary for to function in a particular physical context? Right. Is that is that right? Right. Basically, you whenever an, when an organ is damaged, it, it sends out signals to the bloodstream that it, that it needs help. It needs help with the stem cells. So the bone marrow. What happens is that after 50, the bone the bones get calcified, and the bone marrow can't release uh, adult stem cells into the body. That's why well, the people get wrinkles. People, you know, their joints get damaged. Uh, they, they don't repair. Uh, every injury, you know, doesn't heal up as quickly past 50. It's because you have less stem cells migrating out of the bone marrow. So, going back to some of the gene herbs and some of the chi herbs, these are the ones that will help nourish the bone marrow. It's going to help with stem cell migration. It's going to help you basically build, keep your build up at a very fundamental level. So this is just an example how the bone marrow sends out stem cells, which then become white blood cells. These are all white blood cells. These are red blood cells. So someone has weak, weak blood, they're anemic, they're, they're you know, they're, if you have weak blood, if you're anemic, if you're, blood, if you're, if you're low on red blood cells, you're going to be low on oxygen, because red blood cells are carrying oxygen to the brain. So someone's tired, at, at the very base level, they're not producing stem cells, right? They might want to, they might want to eat, like, food that's going to help them uh, build blood, but if they're not producing stem cells, eventually, you know, it's going to be, there's going to be a problem, you know, so you want to, do some interventions in that and figure out how to produce stem cells in your body. It's not only the Chinese tonic herbs that produce stem cells. Uh, spirulina, climate lake, blue green algae, some of the, uh, the brown seaweed extracts, uh, like the, the fucoxanthin, for example, are all supportive of that cause. And so there's more and more science coming out on how to produce stem cells. Keep, keep reading on that, keep watching what's going on with that. I mean, there's more and more coming out on that. What is this astragalus size? Uh, so this is a particular compound within astragalus that is the, the most uh, nourishing uh, for the bone marrow and for the immune system in general and for the telomeres. So this is, uh, not, not, not too many astragalus products have a lot of astragalus for This is really expensive stuff. It, right now, like, the top astragalus products are about $150 a bottle or the, the extracular size 4 is highly concentrated. So, all right, so, all right, so, as I was talking about earlier, the dragon, the dragon herbs, the, the bar in LA, so this one looks like on the inside. So you go, you go in, this, in the back of the bar, instead of having like, you know, vodka and Miller Lite, Heineken <laughs> and corn syrup and Coca-Cola, there's reishi, there's Ecomia, there's Hoshuwu, there's Shizandra tincture, there's deer antler. You get the picture, right? They just squirt, squirt into your tea, and now you're, you, that's what you're drinking. You wow. know what I mean? Wow. That's you know I mean? awesome. So that's we like... Need, we need one of those over right. here. Yeah. Oh, we need a few of those over here. So, so this is kind of the aesthetics of the setup there. Um, yeah, so they're going to be open, opening another one in, the, in New York, and I'm, I'm, I'm talking with people about how can we do this here. I want to, I want to create like 108 of these in the next 40 years. In, in the in the US. Why don't you start with a small one right here in this store? Or next door, across the street at the cafe. Yeah, it's it's during the evening. Yeah, it's anything it, it is possible. Anything is possible. I don't want to discount any potential re reality. So so basically yeah, so this is gonna happen in, on this planet anyway. Once people get these get these um, plants and these other these other life forms into their bloodstream and they figure out how much better they feel versus like Bud Light. You know, or whatever, you know. Um, then they're going to naturally gravitate to that. They can party on these herbs. They can dance on these herbs. They can do whatever they want on these herbs. And they're going to only get better and better and better instead of worse and worse and worse, right? So that, that's the idea. And ultimately, I'm in this for expanding consciousness, uh, spreading truth, love, and freedom. You got Before you can have freedom, you got to have the truth. And uh, my suggestion to you before I turn this over to a place is make sure that um, your emotions, 
Your thoughts and your actions are all consistent and integrated with one another. Don't, don't um, take actions that are not consistent with your thoughts and your emotions. Make sure everything you're doing in life, that, that your trinity is integrated, your spirit, mind, and body, that the way you show up in the world, that all three are, are consistent with one another. Don't, don't act in ways that you don't feel or think is right. So that's what I want to leave you at. Then you'll have the integrated uh, brain hemisphere. So, okay. Great, great, great presentation. Yes, yeah, thank you. Um, so this uh, page down. Yeah. All right, my name is Okwe Sanwu. Um, been dealing with herbs since I was like that high. My grandmother was a herbalist, like three or four generations of herbalists in the family. Basically, uh, studied in Nigeria, studied in Ghana, studied in uh, Burkina Faso. We talk about herbs as, in, as a whole. Um, also taught classes in urban gardens here uh, throughout the Bay Area, throughout uh, uh, different schools throughout the Bay Area. Um, how I approach herbalism specifically is dealing with uh, the whole person. Not necessarily the, because you have a symptom, doesn't necessarily mean that that is the issue that you're dealing with specifically. Uh, it's specifically dealing with emotional, physical, and then that other part of that spirit. When I mean spirit, that breath of life. So when you breathe in, you have to breathe out. But when you breathe in, do you breathe shallow breathing or do you breathe in from the, uh, your gut, from your genitals, from your knees, from the ground, pulling it back up into your system? That's when you're talking about optimal living or optimal health. And that's when, when we're talking about anything dealing with the liver or the kidneys. The liver and the kidneys is that root part of your body. That's where everything, if you take your liver out, you have no body. Everything stops. Why is that? Because your liver nutrifies. It gives nutrients to the rest of your body. Without the liver, the spleen can't operate. Because you think about what the, what the liver does. On one hand, it's a filter of the body. On the other hand, it spreads out this energy, this chi, right? Um, in Ifa, they talk about the like the inner person or the inner characteristics or the inner uh, fate, which is basically they, they call ori or ori in the the head. So there's the inner head and the outer head. The outer head that ori uh, or is like the uh, characteristics that we deal with on a daily level. The things that you see, the character that we deal with, and those things specifically are dealing with the inner parts of our body as it relates to the outside, so it relates to the inside. But specifically with your ori, your good character. Because good character is more than just my good character, your good character, one thing that spreads over the top of it. Because herbalism itself is not centered in one centered place. Herbs are everywhere. Herbs are worldwide. Herbs, herbs specifically are the things that aid the body, like the thing was saying earlier, that aid the body to do what it does naturally. Right? So whether it be supplements, or whether it be herbs, or whether it be anything, all these things are, are to a food, or things that we have to, for nourishing our body, our physical body, and then our spiritual body. And so I deal with the liver in that, that way because yes, it stores and purifies the blood, which is basically when you store something, you're talking about, it's like, um, it's very yin, what he was talking about from that perspective. Um, also, the liver is like that seed of, because it's for filter, if it's, if it's compacted, or if it has like issues that it's not being flowing in, in, a, um, in a maintained level, or the, the liver blood is not as uh, potent as it should be, or nourishing as it should be, then you'll start seeing like in women, like their menstrual cycle will go irregular, or you know, you'll have like deep pain in your system. Um, the liver also deals with those kinds of things that, uh, because it purifies the blood, it's taking in the blood that, again, when the demon was talking about, when the red blood cells are made inside the bone marrow, right, and then it's produced and it's like a messenger going through the body. So well, when it goes to the body, it ends up as a messenger into other places telling things, what's going on in the body? What pain is going on? What, what, what's the, uh, how do I deal with the situation, the stress, this anguish in my life, the stress or, or terror or whatever is going on in your body? And then the other side of that is that when it gets to the spleen, because the liver kind of feeds the spleen. 
and a, a spleen feeds the liver in a certain kind of way because the spleen takes out the blood, uh, takes out the nutrients out the food, and then it puts it back into the blood. So it builds up the blood, right? And then it also holds, holds the red blood cells and the white blood cells, which basically are, again, stimulating the immune system. So all these things are interconnected in one thing. So we don't have multiple organs. We really have just one organ that's in constant, um, not battle, but connection to each other. And so when we're out of balance, or when our characters are, are, are been thrown out of balance from stimulants, it could be from sounds that we hear outside. It could be from the lights that we're impacted by. It could be by words that people say to us, because it hits us. Just as deep as any herb, just as deep as anything else in around us. And that's really where we're talking about the blood. The blood itself is like the, the life essence. It's the vital part of your body. Without blood in your body, what do you have? You don't have anything. Your body can't survive without blood. So what happens when the blood is tainted? When the blood is not like being purified on a daily basis? It cycles in, it cycles out, right? Purifying the system externally and internally, the deeper parts, the external parts. And so I always like to look at what specifically these organs are, are primarily doing. So the liver, again, we're talking about stores energy, stores, stores that, that vital blood in our body, uh, detoxifying it, storing it physically inside of the, uh, the liver, and then helping the other regulate the flow of that energy or that, that vital essence that we have in our body. So where does that come from? That also comes from the, the kidneys. The kidneys in itself is the vital essence of the body. Because what's, a, what's right up above the kidney? Is that adrenal gland, right? So what is that adrenal gland really doing? It's helping you with all these uh, functions, whether it be reproductive, whether it be um, fight or flight, or whether it be kind of like how do I maneuver and deal with certain things emotionally, physically. Somebody's being angry with me. Somebody's putting this, these kinds of emotions to me. And then how do you manage those emotions? That's all related to the air that we breathe, or the, the air, or the, the, the spirit that we breathe into our body. And the things that we push it into our body and flush out of our body. And so it all, that air also nourishes the organs just like the blood does, just like the food we eat does. So that's really what the, the liver is primarily doing. Now, the liver is associated with the wood element, expansive energy, all those things. It, it's, it's the creativity, but that create, it, the creativity is more than just I'm developing something, but it's the creativity saying that I have the capacity to build or create something. And that's really where that, that comes from when you're talking about it's, it's creative. Because it's giving these things, the nutrients in our blood, the, uh, the memories, the uh, excesses that we take on from others and ourselves. Uh, all these things are correlated in all the things that we accomplish and we do. Um, so that's why when I talk about the liver, I'm, I'm always talking about... Which one am I going? Um, the, the kidney slide. Which one? Can you go back? Yeah, go back. Oh, I passed it up. So just like we talked about those adrenal glands, so the kidney, so the liver and the kidney is like a mother and the child, right? When you think of a mother, what's a mother doing for the child? The mother is nourishing the child, but the child is also nourishing the mother, right? In the same way. Because again, when the mother, when the child is inside the womb, the, the child is like bringing forth all these old emotions, all these emotions from the mother. And what's that mother doing when they're, they're being impacted by everything else and everybody else in their environment? They're bringing on all of this, this, uh, this stagnant energy that hadn't been dealt with before they had a child, before they got pregnant. So that's why that same energy, when just before even when you're thinking about becoming pregnant or outside even in that same vein, when you're thinking about uh, seeking to accomplish or manifest something in your life, it's that same kind of energy like a mother and a child. So you're going in, honing in on one aspect of your life. What is it that I'm, I'm seeking to accomplish? How am I nourishing myself in a certain kind of way? How am I being nourished? How am I nourishing others? So that's all part of that same concept of how do you sustain your vital energy? Because your vital energy is not just yours, it's how you share it with somebody else. And that's where that, that balance comes in. Uh, when they talk about, and father talk about EB and ERA, but malevolence, and, and uh, blessings, right? So EB is that, when you talk about malevolence, it's not necessarily always a bad thing. Huh? When you 
you, do you mean malevolence? That's what I said. Okay. I, okay. And so when I, I'm, I'm talking about those, you mean badness. Badness, exactly. Okay. Badness is not always bad things. So when it says, for example, these concepts of death, right? If something dies and is reborn again, right? It's not always talking about a physical death. You're talking about also transforming yourself or rebuilding yourself to another level, to another space, to another way of thinking, right? So that's the same thing we're talking about the kidneys. The kidneys themselves is dealing with it, that concept of taking something and revitalizing it, right? It's getting into the core of what you are, that vital essence. Nothing can survive in your body without that vital essence. Everything, the kidneys regulate every like, uh, fluid in your body. And so you think about those kinds of things where they're talking about uh, a balance between the liver and the kidney. You can't keep the, uh, the, the liver healthy without keeping the, the kidneys healthy because both of them are correlated, right? And so again, you're talking about the same basic functions. Relation to adrenal glands, reproductive organs. So the reproductive organs are like we talk about the prostate, right? The liver deals with that, so does the kidneys deal with that. Because the prostate, what does it do physically, right? It regulates the way that we um, either hold in that energy or that we release that energy, right, in men. And so what does that mean in women? We're talking about balancing out these hormones. So same, same concept when you're balancing out these hormones when you're going through that change of life or when you're coming into that cycle of being a woman, 14, that same cycle. When you're talking about a child being at, at seven years old, from zero to seven, in the womb, they're developing a certain kind of relationship to the mother and to life outside the, the womb with the mother. Then when she gives birth to that child, then that child starts to regulate themselves. How do I adjust to this environment, this new environment that I'm in, involved with now, right? How am I engaging with it? How am I hearing it and seeing it? Because even though their, their capacity may not be as expanded as we are, because we've been here in this space for a while, but the child still hears. It still feels specifically what's going on around them and how they develop. It's all based off of the things they heard in the womb. How, what they feel and develop here right. when they come out the womb. Yeah. And so the same difference is when the child, the kidneys, right, is dealing with the liver. And the liver is dealing with the kidneys in a certain kind of way that they're, they're correlated. The reproductive organs are dealing with that, that concept of I am developing. I am opening myself up to another place, right? Whether it be in a certain cycle of your life, whether it be a certain cycle of development. Because you can be in, uh, a, as a child, at seven, you're trying to figure out things. What does it mean to me? How do I, how do I uh, interact? How can I use this? I'm gonna go put my hand in a cookie jar. But everybody may not want you to put your hand in a cookie jar at the same time, because that's not the right thing. But in your mind, it is. So we're going back to character, good character. Good character is relative, just like truth is relative. Because what's relative to me may not be relative to you. Mm. And so then, then we start balancing out those concepts of in the body. It's all, everything that's external is still internal. And it's just like relationships. And how we develop our relationships to our own organs, our own life, how we breathe into our, our life how we open up that concept of what life is specifically, all those things help us to sustain our life. And then we're talking about that vital essence of the kidneys, the, that vital essence of the kidneys opens up that doorway. Because it's saying now that every organ in our body needs that essence to survive, right? The liver impacts the gallbladder, right? Because gallbladder stimulates that bowel, but the liver is stimulating that bowel in the, the gallbladder. And that's how you're able to digest that food. But then what's the first thing that you deal with when you put something in your mouth? That saliva comes in. But where's it coming from? That taking the nutrients out of the food so that it can develop. We're talking about the spleen. The eyes, right, are dealing with the liver and the kidneys, but the, specifically the liver. Because the eyes are rooted in the, the, the kidney, I mean, excuse me, the liver. So they say the eyes are seeds of the soul. That's really what they're talking about because your, your eyes are rooted in that part where it sees the external life that we live. And the internal life that we progress through or develop in is where we start pulling from. And so that's why all those memories, all those things that we take on in our life are coming from that essence, from that presence. 
And so that's why, again, we're looking at not only the physical organs as a, a kidney and a liver, we're also looking at the, the capacity of not only our physical emotional life, but the emotional spiritual life. And that's where, we come, that's where growth comes in. So the uh, influence of the skeletal structure, we talked about that a little, little earlier with the bone mineral, because the bones, uh, we're looking at herbs like scaphalara, we're looking at uh, herbs like um, that, that, like uh, eucomia, like um, anything that will enhance the development and growth of your body, the red blood cells, uh, the, uh, anything that's opening your body to growth, to uh, arranging yourself so that you can constantly uh, open up different doorways of, of how you think and how you live. That's where we're talking about skeletal, uh, influences of how the body grows, how the body develops, how the body uh, is rooted. And so when we're talking about producing this collagen in your system, that's what Eucomia does. Eucomia produces this collagen, Eucomia produces this thing that is um, basic to our body. So it's still, still dealing with the liver and the kidneys, Eucomia is, because it's balancing out both of those sides of that reality that we're dealing with, inner and outer. Um, and then we're also dealing with um, the uh, bones, muscles, and tendons, because again, the liver specifically is dealing with the, the, uh, the tendons. So when, in Chinese medicine, when they talk about tendons, tendons goes beyond just the physical tendons in our body. It's talking about the, uh, the, the bones, the muscles, all these things that support it. Because again, the nourishing of the blood in those areas is what gives you that, that, that presence. It gives you that um, stability. And so, again, we're talking about herbs. Olive leaf is one of those kind of herbs for me. This, this is, I've used this herb since I was like 10 years old. My grandmother used to make these uh, really potent like um, uh, teas. She used to crush it up. She used to put it into like water with um, with like uh, cardamom, with um, some of the other herbs we'll talk about today. But olive leaf is an immune builder. Uh, it stimulates the immune system. A part of it called ole European. Um, and then also, it's antimicrobial, antiviral. Uh, it's very good when you're talking about um, like anti-inflammatory. So let's go back to what is when you talk about that false fire, in, inflaming, the, the false flame, right? Going against that flame, and that's produced by a lot of mucus in our system. So again, we're talking about those those foods, how we eat them, how we deal with them. What's our emotional connection to those foods? How do they impact our body? And so, um, but also because it regulates the the system in a way, it's dealing with high blood pressure, high cholesterol. Um, natural antibiotic, um, and countless other things that I've used for topic. I hope there's a big wild olive tree in my backyard, and I mean, I see those leaves everywhere. Mm -hmm. And um, I've lived there at this one place for 15 years, so I mean, there's no pesticides on the tree, except for the ex exhaust fumes from vehicles. No. So would I be able to use the yeah, olives, I mean, the, 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 leaves. The, the leaves from that tree? Yeah, the leaves are more potent than the, um, the physical fruits. Because they carry more of the all the European, that substance in there that gives it that potency. Wow. And so that's why it, it um, it's used in anti-cancer, it has good um, good um, antioxidants within it as well, and it just it invigorates the body in so many different ways. And so again, on the street. No, it's not on the street. It's actually in the parking lot in the back, but only like three or four vehicles go back there. So it's, I mean, I know it's exposed to some fumes, but it's not, I mean, like, it's not right out on MacArthur, say. But well, the good thing about olive trees, too, just like ginkgo biloba trees, right? Uh-huh. Um, ginkgo biloba, this is another one. But ginkgo biloba is uh, one of those other herbs that it can be in the most toxic of areas, right? But it draws in those things, but the, the physical herb itself doesn't really hold in those toxins. That's the point. That's why it's so good in your system, right? Um, and so the olive tree is also a really good, like, sustaining herb. And like I said, I've been using that herb since I was, like, 10 or, or younger. Because my grandmother's been giving it to me and giving me uh, certain um, things for when I had colds or flus or any kind of 
like excess mucus in the body or anything that, um, like any, uh, any kind of viral infection or anything that's going in with your body in that way, that olive leaf is tops. Uh, 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 number four, I got a question on four. This one here? No, the one before. Oh, the previous the one. Previous. Before, yeah. Uh, okay. What is synovial? Synovial fluid. Synovial fluid, yeah. Exactly. Right. Exactly. What, what, is, what is that? And so the, what are we looking at, right? Oh, synovial. Are, are yeah, I know, I, I know I blood, 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 that fluid that is in your, your system that's bringing up, um, I'm not, I'm not saying it's correctly. It's like a lubricant. It's a lubricant, it's exactly. Joints. 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 There yeah. you go, exactly. For all your joints, your, your uh, yeah. okay. muscles, anything like that, that's what's that's keeping your body in. But, so because is the kidneys, and that, that goes back to what we were talking about before, the kidneys regulate every aspect of the fluids in your system. Because they regulate the um, the fluids in your system, it it gets that the body in that um, that point where it's at its optimal level. It's giving it giving its its, its uh, ways to expel toxins, the way to um, uh, to bring in uh, healthy uh, air that we breathe in, way that because it's the kidneys are, are linked to the lungs, kidneys are linked to the ears, kidneys are linked to um, how uh, we react to things even because of, of the production of the semen in our body or the hormones in our body. All those things are, are connected to the, the kidneys. Oh, oh and mint. There's many different kinds of mints. All the mints, the original mint is a spearmint. And the original mint. Um, it's interesting because the original mint, the spearmint, does not have a lot of menthol in it. Uh, it has mostly nutrients in it, like uh, trace minerals and things like that that your body needs. Um, and also anti-inflammatory uh, properties. Obviously it's good for the, the digestion. So offshoots of that mint, like chocolate mint, like um, uh, pineapple mint, uh, pepper. peppermint, exactly, all those things are dealing with like the digestion, dealing with anti-inflammatory, dealing with like uh, reaction to uh, uh, like stress, calming our nerves down, uh, relaxing our nerves, keeping, our, keeping us centered, keeping it rooted. So when you smell it like in aromatherapy, when you're taking it in that way, it gets into your system immediately, whereas eating it or ingesting it takes a little more time for it to uh, regulate into the system. So, the thing about the reason why I use different kinds of mints because it stimulates certain parts of your body. So, chocolate mint, peppermint is going to really stimulate that that part of your body is is opening up different kinds of memories in your system. For me, as I've seen in you in my practice, I've used it in a way that they people have smelled it. They put it on the back of their neck. They put it on the tip of the head, they put it on the back, right here where the kidneys are at, right? Um, there's another herb that I didn't put into this one that's really good also, it's called cola nut, bitter cola. Bitter cola uh, orobo is what they call it also. Bitter cola is really good for the kidneys because it stimulates the urine. It stimulates the urine to be processed through the system and, and flushed out because it's that bitter externally. Internally, there's just also uh, another herb that uh, Ato, Ato is this herb is from like, um, they use it in ceremony with, and it's interesting, uh, within the Egunkum or uh, ancestor ceremony. But when you're using it uh, on external wise with shea butter, with palm oil, right, you're putting it on these areas. With, and I'll put chocolate mint and other condiments with it specifically because it's stimulating the area. Um, is, it's good for like uh, tense muscles, for the sciatic nerve, for like um, like, um, uh, like strained muscles, Can spasms. You spell that? Can you spell it? Which one? You said I go, I cola. Uh, uh, orobo. Orobo. Orobo or bitter cola, a bitter cola. Okay. 
Bitter cola. Bitter cola. Bitter cola. C O L A N A. Ah, see, uh, cola is K O L A. Okay. And bitter cola. That, that's a, a potent herb, and it's used um, primarily for. Well, the, the saying they say with a ropo. Ropo is that herb that it's a bitter taste, but that bitter taste is what opens you up physically and emotionally, right? That bitter taste in your mouth, that taste in your mouth that you have to take, but that turns into sweetness after you're able to deal with that bitterness in your stomach. And where do you get that, that, that from? Oh, you can get, actually, it comes from West Africa, but you can get it on eighth and clay. They have it there. Um, it's called a mammoth swap. They have that kind of herbs and things like that. Eighth and clay, what is that, a store or something? That's it, uh, yeah. Right there on, um, on that's the street. It's on A Street. The place is replaced. Is it like a Chinese herb store? Mm. It's no. a, uh, like an African uh, Caribbean store. Oh. Mm. Oh, salt palmetto. Okay. Now, salt palmetto, again, powerful regulator of not only just for men, for their prostate. Big misconception. Right? And in link with this, this tonic, this, these herbs that I'm using in this tonic, because it regulates your hormones in men. Right? It stops it from, uh, it's right along with the Heshawu, right? Heshawu does some of the same thing. That's why these herbs mesh in together so well, right? Um, the salt palmetto is also good for the mammary glands in women, right? And producing milk, lactation. It's good for like the cervix, the ova, balancing out your hormones in your body. Um, and for men, it's really good for um, building up the testosterone, but primarily for the prostate. That prostate is, is like key because it stops it from, just like Keshavu, uh, it stops it from uh, getting infected and enlarged. It stops it from, um, it feeds the body that, that those essential nutrients that it needs. And that's, again, going back to what's the function of eating the foods? What's the function of a herb? It's to give your body the nutrients that it needs to sustain itself. Is this something like you cook as a tea mm -hmm. or this is more like... I use this berries. You use the berries or you use the... Um, uh, the powder, yeah, and that's primarily. I use the the berries in mine, uh, the dry berries, but also use a powder specifically depending on what it's doing. Um, and so again, there's different seasons. What? Why do you take tonics in, in certain ways? You don't just take the same tonic consistently over the, the course of the whole year, right? Because something may put uh, like by shoot, right? It pushes up excess mucus out your body. But if you have way too much, um, uh, if your body's really dry. If your body's really like um, in going through a, a system where it, it's like it needs fluids, it needs to be rehydrated. You don't want to use something that's going to uh, take those excess fluids out your body. You want to be balanced in what the herb that you're using, yeah. right? That's the point. So same thing with salt palmetto. Salt palmetto is a very good herb and you can use that consistently as a tonic herb. But sometimes you want to, how are you using the herb and what time of the year, what season are you using it? Because that's the other side of how do you use the herb? How do you make tonics? Is specifically in uh, the season, in your environment. Like for example, if you're in a very hot environment, right? You don't need super super hot hot herbs to like invigorate heat in your body. If you do that, what's going to happen? You're going to dry out. You're going to be dehydrated. You're going to have all these other functions in your body go south for the winter, right? It's going to go out of commission. But if you're in a, in a moist environment, right, then you want something that's going to invigorate your body, that's going to give your body that strength to, to manage in that cold environment, put the uh, oxygen to the extremities of the body, put heat to the extremities of the body. And so soft palmetto is one of those kinds of things that I think when you when use externally or internally, um, it, can, it can promote, like for example, I've used it where I crush the berries up and I put it directly with obviously other herbs. Uh, on the womb to promote uh, to balancing out the, the, the hormones in the cell. It, that helps tremendously. My grandmother used to do that. And I, you know, I talk a lot about my grandmother because my grandmother was a big influence in my life, clearly, uh -huh. right? Because she was a, she, I was there with her when she was with clients. I was there with her when she was dealing with certain things. That's how I learned. Outside of that, in the garden. And so when you look at something grow up in a garden, what happens? You see how the nature of what it does. You see how it grows, you see how it develops, you see how that herb physically helps the body in a certain kind of way. That's the point of, that's how people really start to learn how these herbs work. So there's a, again, when you see an animal go to an herb and they're picking at this herb, eating it, 
there's a reason why they're eating that herb in that specific time. There's a reason why uh, there's dogs that go and start biting on grass or bitter leaves or nettles at a certain time because they're lacking certain things in their system. And that's the thing that, that when we start to be more conscious of the things that we're taking in our mouth, we start being more conscious of how we feel and the emotional connection to that food. Uh, so the stragglers, stragglers, uh, you know, he, he basically, uh, Badeen, hit a good uh, understanding of what stragglers is, it helps to build up the T cells, helps support, the, stimulate the immune system. Um, obviously also digestion. That's one that a lot of people don't necessarily uh, recognize stragglers for, but it helps with the digestion. So if you have any digestive issues, you can use stragglers. Jujube, you can use um, any of those herbs that help to stimulate uh, the body to, to eliminate correctly in a certain kind of way. So, uh, so it talks about uh, adapt. Um, so this is like a, an adaptogen herb. When we're talking about adapt, how do you adapt to things? When you're thrown in a new environment, how do you in, in deal with other people that are may or may not be on your side or against you? Against you? But how do you get in there and physically root yourself into that space? And that's real. That's even what it's talking about too. Is that how do you go into an environment, root your body into it, connect with people, but at the same time keep yourself in its own container? Meaning not overreacting to a situation, not underreacting to a situation, but looking at the situation for what it is, looking past the illusion. An illusion is, is easy to hold on to. We create illusions in our mind every day. We create illusions about how we we uh, pick up things. Or this person looked at me strange. How do I? I they, they mean, they, mean, they not, must not like me. Those kinds of things that we're dealing with emotionally are still rooted in the same kinds of things. How we adapt to that environment. So any kind of adaptogen, like stragglers, right? So if your immune system is suppressed, it, it keeps you push you boost your immune system up. For example, if you have a cold or a flu or any other thing, you don't use the stragglers though when you are. Like for example, somebody has lupus, or somebody has a certain kind of autoimmune diseases. Because if you use it that way, what happens? The immune system is fighting against itself. So you don't use this herb in that, in that course. So if you have any kind of autoimmune system issue, there's certain times that you can use slight amounts of it. Just like, you, like in homeopathy, right? You can use slight amounts of arsenic, dilute it, dilute it, dilute it. It's helpful. But Stragglers in this sense, when you're talking about adapting to your environment, adapting to your inner environment and your external environment, you want to know how you're using this herb. Is this person physically taking this herb in? Will they be able to assimilate it in a certain kind of way? Are they a child? Is this an older person? Is this person um, dealing with an autoimmune uh, disease? All those factors come into play. What is autoimmune? Autoimmune, basically your, your body is fighting against itself. Like lupus. Like lupus, exactly. Or maybe even Lyme disease. Yeah. yeah. Lyme disease? Yep. Yeah. Because your body, your body is, it's like, it's like I, I like to give the analogy of uh, an army, right? So the army, you have, uh, you have an army that is solid behind you, that's fighting all, all the defense, everybody's trying to come, all your enemies trying to come in. But sometimes there's enemies that, that Make your, your, your lieutenants, your captains into rogues, right? So it starts to fight against it, each other. So it starts to act like it's in, in line with what you're doing, but then it comes in and sabotages you. And so that's why you want to keep that liver healthy. And that's another reason why we're looking at adaptogenic herbs. Is this for good for a person my age, 80 years old? It's for, it's for a lot of different people. Because again, it, it builds up your system, immune system, right? Stimulating the immune system. And that's really what we're talking about. We're talking about those things that uh, boost the system, that revitalize the body. So fatigue, because again, it's helping you to do what? Adapt to your environment. If something's helping you to adapt, it's helping you to be invigorated. It's helping you to be focused. It's helping you to be aware of your environment. So anything that's keeping your mind aware, focused. What, do you, what is the first step of, of awareness? Is your digestion. Because if your digestion is shot, you can't be aware. So if you're eating after a certain time, like the biggest digestive time is between 11 a.m. and 3.30 p.m. So after that, your body starts to slow down. Things start to go internal, right? As if your body's about to go to sleep. As things are about to go, you know, your metabolism is slowing down, you're slowing down, 
you're relaxing, you're ready to go to sleep. Even if it's four o'clock, five o'clock, your body's still getting to that stage. The lights or the, the, the sun is starting to go down. Things are, are starting to slow down in your body. So if you're eating heavy meals or, or meals that are hard to digest after that time period, then your body's gonna, it's gonna sit there. It's not gonna digest, it's gonna turn to sugar, it's gonna turn into fat, right? All fat is, is vital energy, mm. right? Ready to be used. Mm. And so that's the things that we, we also wanna think about when we're talking about digestive herbs. And this is, this is another one that, that opens up. What's the name on there? Uh, swelling. Swe exactly. It's what? Swelling. Swelling. Mm -hmm. Like a bloated stomach? Yeah. Okay. Look at the viruses there. Oh, this? Oh, yeah, yeah. Because it builds up your immune system. Heshawu. Heshawu is one of my favorite herbs. I use it pretty much in every tonic that I use. Because, again, it's uh, both yin and yang in that sense. Because it's good for females, good for males. It builds up your body and it strengthens your body. Um, it helps you to go internal and it helps you to open up your... your uh, your body to live at its optimal health. Now, Hesha Wu in itself is uh, this uh, not weed is another version of Hesha Wu that grows here in the uh, States. <laughs> what did you call it again? Not weed. Not weed. Not weed. Not weed. Not weed. N O T. Huh? Weed. Right? Um, and so this one has the highest, and this is what I always like to say to people too, because less it than um, uh, you can get it out of many different sources, animal sources get out of soy uh, sources. But Heshawu has the most um, natural occurring lecithin. Um, and so lecithin helps with like, again, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, right? Healthy brain function, joints, hormones, all those things that lecithin help the body to function in its optimal way. So it's more like a vitality herb, right? And in one way, it's a, it, it is a jing herb, and in another way, it is a shin herb because it's helping you spiritually as well, because once you root in and you're living there, it protects your living and kidney. That's the function of Hesha, right? From a fatty liver, from a cirrhosis of the liver. Um, helps the, the, the kidneys to work to its optimal level um, in protecting you. Um, and then, like I said, it supports bone marrow building, the blood building. Um, so Hesha also helps, excuse me, because it's helping with the kidneys, it's helping with lower back pain, joints, knees, um, inflammatory issues, right? That's why this, this herb is really good to use with eucomia, right? Eucomia and this go hand and foot. They go, go back and forth between each other, stimulating certain angles of the same organs. Eucomia? Yeah. Eucomia. Uh, yeah. How do you spell that? Uh, EU, we'll come, in, we'll, we'll come in here okay. to it. Um, we may come into this one. But uh, EU, C O M M I A. Uh, so Hesha Wu also is good for the prostate. Again, stops the prostate from enlarging. It stops the prostate from getting infected. Um, it also helps with like again, female issues, right? Um, it also helps with like uh, hair growth. That's primarily what yeah. it's used for. It's the hair growth. And is it a bark or what is it? It's a root. It's, it's a root. root. And there's a prepared and unprepared. This is the prepared version. The prepared version, you take uh, basically the black beans, you put it in water with the root, the raw hishawu, or raw uh, full tea, whatever. Put that in there, and then you boil it all the way down. And then it, what it does is that it, that process opens up other properties in this herb, right? And so uh, the raw one is dealing with like constipation primarily, um, dealing with some other functions of the digestion, uh, whereas the prepared version, deals with all these other things, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, um, dealing with, uh, has natural antioxidants in there. It's good for the memory, because again, it calms the memory, calms the mind. Calms the mind, centers the mind, gives you like that, that's why I say it's, it's, it's similar to like a shin herb as well, because it opens up your mind in a certain kind of way. Uh, it's like they call it like a vitality herb, stimulating or developing yourself. Um, also builds uh, testosterone in the system. And so, some people have used it as, as aphrodisiac, not a stimulant whatsoever. Not a stimulant, which is a good thing. Because you can take this thing, just like any other tonic herb, you can take it, it's consistent every day. You can take it in powder form. You can take it in uh, other forms of it that are, uh, that you use in tonic. What, what would be the most, 
bioavailable way to take this? Uh, you, again, you like, can take it in decoction form this way that we're doing in, inside the tunnels okay. that we have here, right? Because this liquid is hot, it's going to get into your system quickly, right? Okay. Also, uh, the powdered version okay. that I found. What about I, just eating, excuse me, eating the bark? You can't eat that. You no. won't get anything you from it. You can't. You can't. Okay. You won't be able to digest. Exactly. You won't be able to digest. Just like a stragglers. You yeah, can't just take a stragglers and put it in your mouth. Yeah. It won't do anything for you. But when you do, you're releasing those herbs, releasing those, um, <clears throat> that, uh, that vital essence of that herb when you put it into water or you're okay. putting it into vinegar or you're putting it into uh, alcohol. It's, it's extracting the, that vital energy or that vital essence of that herb. So and this so, would be. Oh, go ahead. So this would be good for helping to lower cholesterol. Yeah, lower cholesterol and high. hair vitality. Mm -hmm. Yep, it does. And so, and then the good thing about Hishabu also is that, again, because it, it helps with the liver, anything helping with the liver, whether it be milk thistle, right? But it helps with the liver so that it's working with your ear, your hair, your eyes, your skin, your nails, detoxifying the blood, getting your body prepared, getting your life like rooted. Right? And that's what it's talking about. Again, going back to that same concept that we were talking about earlier. Uh, that's why this, one, this herb, just like I was talking about earlier, works really well with salt palmetto. Right? Because again, balancing out the hormones. Again, helps with the prostate. Again, helping the body to, to bring that vital essence to its optimal point. So, vital essence, we were talking about in the uh, gene, right, in the kidneys, some of it is passed on from our parents, from the womb, you know? the first point of conception, and then outside that conception. That's, that's what we come here with. And then it's, it becomes depleted every day. And so how do we replenish that? Some people by breathing, the deep breathing, right? By taking in this air, this vital air that we have in our body. But not just taking it in, but taking it in and, and uh, circulating it through our body. Taking it in by foods, taking it in by herbs like this. This herb can revitalize that essence in your body. Miranda. <clears throat> Miranda is like, also deals with the, the kidneys and the liver and things like that. And it, it gives, it produces that, it's good for like impotence. It's good for like, again, strengthening and toning the body. It's a good tonifier of the, the liver and the kidney, right? It's a good tonifier of, of the system, helping the body to promote these, the, uh, the healthy function, like it's a healthy function of the liver healthy function form it, forming like a, uh, the skeletal structure in your body, like keeping you rooted, keeping you uh, fortified in that sense. There's a, uh, and so I like uh, to use that in conjunction with Cisandra, because Cisandra is kind of doing the same thing, right? Because again, it's hitting all the three treasures. And so three treasures, again, I, I for me, I studied herbalism through, uh, through traditional Ifa, in Nigeria, I started herbalism through um, through my grandmother, who, who learned it mainly through the, the herbs and roots that she used in, in Louisiana, uh, and the herbs that she found and that are local here in the Bay Area. These are herbs that I, I primarily have used. So the words that I use may not be the same words as, as you're talking about, but it's the same concepts. So that's the that's the main thing is to look at the concept. What's the, the point of the herb? How are you using this herb? Because herb can be from China, herb can be from America, herb can be from any part of the world. It still has that same vital essences that anywhere in the world that they have. Some parts, because again, our environment dictates what we take in our body and how that, that herb in that environment is helping us. So if I grow, for example, olive leaf in a depleted soil, it's not going to have any kind of life force in it. It's dead. It doesn't have anything. It's not pulling anything from the earth. But it's that, that nutrients in the earth are rich. Because we, we've grown pineapples in Richmond, California. Right? I've grown like herbs that are not even supposed to grow in the Bay Area. This is a fact you're talking about? This is a fact. You this, have grown pineapples these in Richmond. These are grown pineapples in Richmond. I okay. have grown them. I've grown pineapples in Richmond. I've Were grown, they good? Yeah, they're very good. They're juicy. <laughs> this wow. is and so again, it's, it's all about the soil. It's all about the foundation. Yeah. Right. It's all about, and that's what we go back to the same point. Yes. The foundation of where you're coming from. What are the nutrients that you're pulling out of the ground?
so okay, yeah, no, no doubt. There's, there's, a, there are places where, like I was in Diana Madeira, my parents live at, right? And I, I got an olive tree, and I'll go back to this in a minute, but I have to tell you this. They, was, they paint their trees. So I was like, wait a minute, you know, why are you painting your tree, right? He's like, oh, because you know, it gets, um, uh, it, it gets burnt by the sun. It gets, you know, affected by the sun. I was like, wait, it has bark. How could it not be, you know, protecting itself? Was, and I looked at how they grew those trees, and they grab, they're like monocropping. It's all one same tree and all the same thing. They're not replenishing the soil. They're not giving anything else to the soil. They're putting all these things back in that are, are harmful, that beef up the tree, but then that the, the soil is depleted. So you won't have any kind of good medicinal quality in that herb. So when I took that tree from them, I, when I brought it to the space in my, my parents' backyard, and start growing that olive tree, what's the first thing I did before I put it in the ground? I nurtured the, the soil. soil. Oh, I nurtured yeah. the soil. I gave life to that soil. And the soil gave life to me. Because I put what? Okay. Food in the soil. I gave it nutrients. I gave it bones. I gave it other things that the body could physically inhabit in ourselves, inhabit in the tree. Because the tree is just like us. They need all the same kinds of yeah. nutrients that are, we need. That's right. And that's what any of the herbs is doing. It's gathering the same nutrients, the same herbs that we need in a certain context. But it's bringing those same things in them as we need in ourselves. And so Cisandra, Cisandra is another one of those um, really good herbs because it it helps you, it has antioxidants. Do you know what antioxidants do for the system? Antioxidants, they, right, well, they reduce free radical damage. Exactly. Which exactly. is because of oxygenation, right? Exactly. And so anything that's an antioxidant, so basically you think of something that's oxidizing, it's basically breaking down over time, mm. right? Whether it be from the sun, whether it be from external things like food that we're eating, empty foods, we're eating McDonald's, or if we're eating things that are harmful to our system, or if we're eating uh, foods in the wrong time of the day that's not being assimilated, it's going to create free radicals in our system, mm. right? It's going to create things that are going to throw us off whack, throw us off course, right? And so that's really what a herb like Cisandra berry does. It's not only dealing with the liver, which it, it supports the liver greatly, right? Um, but again, what's supporting the liver is supporting the immune system. Because what does the liver do? The liver detoxifies the blood. The liver helps um, feed and nurture all these other organs in our body by spreading that chi out, by spreading that energy out to the other organs of the body, other parts of the body, right? Because that's, that's the function really that it's doing. So when you talk about it nourishes the gene, it's doing specifically that. It's nourishing the body. Would it be correct to think of the liver as a filter? Yeah, definitely. Okay. It is that. It's a filter and um, a, uh, it filters out the blood, but also gives. So it's not only taking, it's also giving. So that's why when you overload it with excess oils in your systems, because the, the liver can't take oils, excess oils in the body. Because once it takes excess oils in the body, it gets clogged up, right? So we put a filter, you have a filter, a strainer, and you put a bunch of lard in there. What's going to happen? Can you get anything through that? No. Not at all. Why can't you? Because it, it's stuck. It's grind. All those things over time, because it's filtering the blood, it collects grime. So what do you have to do? So the main important thing is to clean the liver. Yeah. Flush out the liver. Well, there's some oils like coconut and olive don't clog up. But they will, in they excess. Will. Oh. Because again, if you're cooking fried foods, yeah. like olive, olive oil, it, after a certain temperature, it loses all its nutrients. Right, right if you burn it, yep. or past a certain Fahrenheit. If It'll lose all its nutrients. Yeah. But the thing is, again, if you like, I can't go and take a, a cup of olive oil and drink that olive oil down. My liver will be like screaming, "What are you doing?" You know, <laughs> you know, we're trying to live. I, I give you a perfect, another perfect example. When I first got back into the country from Burkina Faso, uh, right up above Ghana, country right up above Ghana, um, I had Hep A, hepatitis A, uh, inflamed liver from the water, right? In the water, because uh, again, a different environment. My body had to adjust in that environment, which I took herbs there, and it was flushing it out. But again, your body has to still repair itself. So you have to give time to repair itself. So you have to give it better foods to repair itself. But I, 
they, when I went into that, <laughs> I came back. I didn't come back to the Bay Area. I came back to Madeira. And so when I came back to Madeira, California, no slide against Madeira, California, but a slide against Madeira, California. Because <laughs> when I was there, I was in that Madeira County Hospital and I didn't need to be there. But my parents were like, oh, you got malaria, you got malaria. He was like, no, I don't have malaria. The doctors there checked me. I, I couldn't get on a plane if I had malaria. But when I, I took, uh, I was like, you know, they, they were trying to give me all these processed oily foods. And I was like, I need some green leafy vegetables. Yeah. I need some bitter foods. I need some, yeah. give me some grapefruit juice. Yeah. You know, give me something, bitter leaves, something that would stimulate. Something real. Right, that stimulate the bowel, that help me to kind of repair yeah. what's going on. Um, and so that's where, that's why the, any, anything that's like an antioxidant, or anything that helps the body to flush the liver out, anything that helps the body to withstand the elements of it in its environment, is a herb that is uh, called a an adaptogen, right? Because it's an adaptogenic. It's helping to adapt to the environment. And so, think about what the first thing that an adaptogen herb does. It deals with your reproductive organs. Wow. So we're going back to that vital essence again, right? Because that adaptogen, like ginseng, for example, deals with your reproductive organs. It deals with your adrenal glands. It deals with your thyroid. It deals with all these other functions in your body, balancing out these hormones in your system. These are the things and functions and forms in your body that when you start looking at the herb, it's not just the herb itself, it's what the herb functions as in conjunction with your body. Because the herbs are there to help, to heal, but the herbs don't do it by themselves. And that's why it comes to, like, this is my, another one of my favorite herbs, Paligala, or you and she. And she is, uh, it takes the energy from the kidneys, that sexual energy from the kidneys, which is that vitality energy from the kidneys, and pulls it up to the heart. And so when you take the energy, that sexual energy, that vital essence of the body, pulls it up to the heart, then what does that do? That creates willpower to get over addictions. That creates willpower to um, hone in and focus in on what you want to accomplish in your life. And believe me, it, vital dreams, I mean like vivid dreams, Polygala will give you those kind of dreams where you are fully present in those dreams. This may help you study or like yeah. be focused. Exactly, because it, it simulates also the pineal gland as well. But it's not hallucinogenic. No, no, no. no. That, that's, that's, that's the thing. What are you talking about? Those tonic herbs that in a tonic bar when, uh, cut down the inhibitions but give you like that strength and, uh -huh. and uh, uh, like grounding? That's what polygala does. That's why you only need, so it's powerful. So all you, all you need is like three, three to four grams at the most of polygala, right? In, in a concoction or a decoction. That's all you need because it, it opens you up, it centers you, it helps you to get over your fear. And again, we're talking about the liver, we're talking about fear, right? Yeah. And you're, when you fog up your liver, you start to have fear, anxiety, because your body is not functioning a certain kind of way, so you, you react. Irritability. You start to snap at people. Mm. You start to want to just like, ah! You know, you ever have those people that you encounter, and then every, no matter how sweet, how beautiful you are to that person, they're just like, yeah. you know, it's the liver that they're dealing with. It's an issue in the liver. This might seem like a real off question, but to your knowledge, was Bruce Lee into this? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah no. Like, for instance, you think he took polygala? I'm sure that he did. I'm sure he did. Because it, 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 and it, that's a good point in itself, because when you're talking about herbs, again, like, um, they are helping you to live to your optimal level. Helping, helping you, right? And so, when you talk about a scholar warrior, that means he studied many different things. Yeah. So a person that is learning, he studies many different things, but he's honing in on his own characteristics, his own personality, his own self, right? self-awareness, self-grounded. And so any of those things are rooted within that. So of course, the way that you take in herbs, the way that, then, that you speak to people, the way that you um, deal with everybody in your environment, the way that you uh, take care of yourself is the way that you exude or present yourself in a way that is giving a lesson to someone else that you may or may not even know. So that's all a part of that same function. And so Polygala, again, it's that, he, and it's, he talks about that, the penetration meridian. The penetration meridian, because it's linking that 
that essence of your body that is that that sexual energy. And so when people think about sex, they think only sex is like this, I'm going in, I'm going out, and it's done. But sex is a communication. Sex is a development of thought, right? And so when you're engaging with someone and you're having a, a good, deep, thoughtful conversation with someone, that's like having sex. That's even before you even get into anything else. Because if you can't communicate to someone, then there's what? There's going to be a barrier that you can't connect or you can't go through anymore. Right? Somebody's going to put up this false front. And so that's any inner connection. Any uh, inner uh, development has to start with that building of yourself. I can't find my perfect mate. I can't do X, Y, and Z. But have you developed yourself? Mm -hmm. Come on, man. That's Preach. really, that's really what it comes from. That's what it comes from. Can Ronald do this polygala as a kind of capsule? Uh, polygala does. We have a herb, uh, dragon. Preach and teach him. Drag, dragon herbs is as, as uh, polygala. It's called mudfog. But astragalus. Yep, astragalus. We do come in thin capsule, definitely. Um, so that's, I always say all those kind of things. And so when I say vivid dreams, I mean vivid dreams. <laughs> I mean very present. Is to it? where you see yourself and you, you controlling your environment in your dreams. Oh, and so, lucid exactly, lucid dreaming, exactly. And so your, your deep dreaming is part of your deep reality when you're awake, right? And so people say, what do you mean you, when you're awake and you're asleep? That's two separate things. It's not. It's not. Because when you focus and you're rooted in your mm -hmm. inner self, in your inner dreams, whether it be daydreaming, or whether it be night dreaming, or whether it be deep REM dreaming, right? There's different levels of dreaming. Just one comment on that. Say, take the iceberg. This is going to be like a metaphor, but the, the tip, you know, like yep. that sunk the Titanic, right? But yep. I saw a poster of some fancy photograph. I mean, it was phenomenal because you have this tiny, didn't look tiny, but, you know, a cone sticking out, but beneath the surface of the ocean, this massive. So in the studies I've done, I think the conscious is analogous to the tip of an iceberg, whereas the subconscious yeah, exactly. is the rest of it. And, uh, I mean, if you can get your subconscious on track with, like, living your best, best life, well, then we're all Bruce Lee's. Exactly. And so, Bru and, so, <laughs> and so when you start to bring in that vital energy of breathing, breathing, herbs, food, life, right? I'm breathing in this, not just, you know, I'm walking up the stairs, I can't breathe, right? Or am I going from here? If I'm going from here, if I'm going from my knees, and I'm holding this air up. <clears throat> And this is what this, this, these kind of herbs are doing in your system. This is another herb that I use, cardamom. And cardamom, why I use cardamom is because cardamom, it has uh, vitamin C, magnesium, uh, potassium, iron, all, a lot of your trace minerals are in there, but it circulates in your system. I use a lot of cinnamon as well because it circulates in your system. It, it brings uh, that you're coming from here and you can flush things out of your system. You can move in your system. So when you're going into your dreams, these dreams are... Uh, going into it, uh, tapping into your subconscious, but just beyond your subconscious. Just like the Ori Inu. The Ori Inu, like we talked about earlier, is not your physical brain. You talk about Ori as a head, but your, your Ori Inu is your soul. Right? And where is, to a, to a greater or lesser degree, where is your soul centered in? Right? In your center, in your, in your uh, rootedness, in the, inside the liver. Because what happens through your eyes? Ending of your liver is in your eyes. Don't say that again. The ending of your liver is in your eyes, right? That's why you can see if your eyes are jaundice, or if your eyes are glossy, or if you have certain issues with your liver, they come up immediately. Deep or dark circles underneath your eye. You know, any of those kinds of things that your body is like telling you, look, we're having an issue. Let's deal with this problem. There's a problem going on now. Can we deal with this? So you deal with the physical it's symptom. Does that help you? No. Why does it help you if you're just dealing with the physical symptom only? Because it's going to recur again. Because you haven't dealt with the, the, the thing that spurred it on. You haven't dealt with the thing that actually helps you to create a different reality. 
the root of it, so to speak. Yeah, the root. And that's why we talk about the liver and the kidney as the root of the, the body. You said you only need a couple of grams with that? that what that's it. Two to three grams is all I use. In Daily? Daily. Day. In, a, in a tonic? In a tonic. In a tonic. In a tonic. What's there? Too, Huh? It says energy in that too. Oh, without any doubt. <laughs> <laughs> but then also, this is also to manifest what you're seeking to accomplish. So when you are rooted in yourself, when you are taking that vital energy and putting it up to your heart, where what happens with your heart? What kinds of things happen in your heart? Things that are, are like emotionally tied to every aspect of your life. You know, when somebody says, my heart aches, I feel pain in my heart. Why? Because this is the part of your body that, that tries to open up and expand and like embrace. Mm -hmm. Embracing others. Mm -hmm. Embracing yourself. Embracing concepts or, or ideals or uh, patterns, mm -hmm. memories. All those things are rooted in that space. And so then when you come up from there, you bring that sexual energy up to the same point, then you start to develop in another kind of way. Because then you start to deal with your pineal gland. Right? Or, and pituitary gland. Because it opens up and expands a whole different reality. So when you're talking about having lucid dreams, what is that really doing? You're talking about going into a, a set of reality that is blocked off from all the external stimuli that we deal with on a daily basis. And so the internal stimuli that we create is the things that physically we create. All our fears, all our sadness, all the things that stifle us. And that's what Polygala doesn't like cure, oh, you take polygala, all your fears be doing about no. <laughs> polygala will aid you in that process. It'll help you to develop that process. Not take it away. There is no such thing as a magic pill. Never happen, never will. So I always stress that because people love to use pills or supplements, like, oh, okay, vitamin C. But what happens if you overtake vitamin C? Death. Kidney stones. Death. <laughs> Death. But vitamin C does what? Antioxidants. It, it helps with the body. Immune system, simulates the immune system. That helps with all other kind of functions. Calcium, very good, not more than just for your bones, right? Enzyme work in your body. But if you overtake certain calcium that aren't gonna digest in your body, what happens? What, what happens when your body if you overtake calcium? <coughs> Basically, your, your body is like over calcified, so it starts to have certain things. These kidney stones. 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 It starts to create these other things. It starts to create backup in your body. <coughs> what happens when you put something in a, a, a sieve and you put a, a concrete in it? Right? You, you, you wet that concrete up, what's going to happen? Quick acting concrete. Right? It starts to solidify. So you're thinking about balance overall.